Sure. Are you ready? Because some of them uh, are not in the session and they want to see it as well. Okay, now it's starting. Okay, okay. please, you can continue. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so, uh, as I was saying, what uh, the platform is providing you is when you have a mobile application to develop, a business application to develop, you will focus more closely to the business need, to the problem that you're trying to solve, the application you're trying to provide, and much less close to code. So whatever you need to create, you think about the functionality, you think about the interaction with the end user, and when you create that in a studio, probably very familiar to any other tool that you create, you have a studio, which is an IDE, that allows you to create those screens and do the rules that you want to implement. That is stored in a format uh, which is a metadata. So this is stored, for example, in an XML format. And when you need to deploy that application, you move that into a server. And in that sense, the server could be a Windows or other platforms. Let's uh, assume the typical case is Windows based and that uh, application now is available to be accessed to be used by multiple clients so if you look at the left hand side of my slide I have a few examples there uh, that application that one application that you wrote that one effort only is now running or could be running on a list of devices and when the user is accessing that application via an iPad, they will see an iPad-like application or an iPhone iOS. And if the users are accessing that application via an Android, they will see uh, an Android controls a look and view of the Android and so on. Uh, or on a Windows environment, if they're accessing that application via desktop, you will see that, or they will see that, as a desktop, Windows desktop application. So, from the point of view of the client side, you are creating screens and you are creating the normal interaction that you would normally do. Uh, but also there's an aspect which is the right hand side, is the, the server. What kind of data you need to interact with, what kind of data you need to pull, what kind of processes you need to call to validate, Eventually, you might have services that you need to call to do a calculation or do a check. This is the server side. So I'm going to split my presentation in two. Uh, I'm going to start with I'm going to start with the client side, so middle to the left of this slide, and then uh, when we're happy with that, we move into the server side. I'll give a quick overview and how you do that to get in your application now talking to multiple systems, uh, back-end systems, or multiple services that could be out there on the web, or cloud-based systems, etc. Um, even though I'm probably not going to be asking you, do you have any questions, do you have any questions, feel free, as I said, to ask any questions. So if you're writing, I believe Martina could see what, what you're writing, and Martin, if you could interrupt me and, and ask the questions, or you can just come in, any of you, and via voice and ask any question. So if you think in terms of the architecture or the platform, is this uh, middle bit here that you'll be using. So you, we are providing you a platform. On that platform, you use uh, an ID a studio and uh, tools to create, design your application, design your screens, um, the logic, the checks that need to be done. And that is uh, then exposed as a client side to the uh, native clients or browser-based clients you might have and interact back to the backend systems getting data from any database, for example, or integrate into any other framework, any other type of code that you might uh, have already done, and integrate into any enterprise application 
there's a few examples there, like SAP, Salesforce, Oracle, but uh, that also is true for any um, bespoke application, any legacy system you might have. So that can also be used to, to interact with your application. So in that sense, what kind of applications, enterprise applications you could be developing? You could be developing uh, front-end for a specific system, a legacy system, for example. You could be mashing up or combining information from multiple systems, like SAP and Salesforce, which means you're combining a, a view on the mobile side to two completely separate applications. If I'm mixing up or I need to get data, get details from SAP and Salesforce, from the client side point of view, it doesn't matter what application is the backend system. I see one screen that is uh, related to my business need, to what I'm developing at the moment, uh, whatever business decision I need to make at the moment. From your point of view in terms of development also, note the left, top left-hand side where I say .NET or Java, for example, or even other languages you might have. If you already have a code that you um, have developed, you're using, that can participate on your application and you, when you create with the Magic Platform, you can call in those codes, um, expose interfaces in the development sense uh, here, and uh, make that as part of your application. So you are leveraging whatever effort you may already have done to and bring that together with your current application. Hello, Lalit, you are uh, in the call now? Hmm? Not yet? <laughs> yeah, I saw him joining, but I don't okay. know. Continue. Okay. Um, in terms of the distribution of that um, application, what you create, we have a magic server at the bottom of my slide here showing, and on top of that I have the metadata. So whatever you create on the studio that I'm going to show you soon is stored as metadata. And on the other hand, you have also the any data sources that you um, have to storage or retrieve data. The clients are out there. They are on the devices and they are typically accessing the server or the application via HTTP or HTTPS preferably. And the clients could be any of those that are showing at the moment on the top, but also you have the future client. What is the future client? If you create an application that today is running on iOS and Android and Windows Mobile and BlackBerry and Desktop, what happens if tomorrow you want to support Tizen or Firefox uh, OS or any other system that might come into play in the next few years? We don't know yet. Um, in terms of the application, your effort, you created an application, it's already there running. What do you need to do now to support that client, that future client that we don't know what it is? And uh, typically you have zero effort because as soon as we release our support for that platform, your client, your application metadata is now translated and it will run and it will render on the typical controls and format for that client. And likewise, if I, as I mentioned before, your metadata is currently being uh, transformed or rendered and looking in, uh, the same on, or typically for the Android as an Android user would expect, or in a more radical difference on a BlackBerry that has its particularities for navigating and interacting this is already done, provided to you by the platform. So it does very few details that you might want to uh, add specifically support, which you can do, obviously, but in general, 
in the majority of the effort is unique. I do one effort and all those details for the platforms are managed by the platform. I feel tempted to ask, do you have any questions? Rayat, Rakesh, Rahul, Laid, do you have any questions? Um, no question right now. Yeah, okay. we can go ahead. Thank you. Um, so, what do we have? In, as I mentioned in the beginning, what you need to focus is on the business logic on the business uh, solution that you're trying to implement and that is allows you to talk to the business directly and create screens or create what data you need um, you need to the user needs to interact with and design the screens so the top uh, of my slide there of the pyramid you have that focus this is the uh, effort you need to put on and quickly discuss with your users, create the screens, create the logic and the details underneath are managed for you by the platform. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting some feedback. If you could mute your microphone so while you're not speaking, that would be great to help me. I can hear someone talking on the background. Uh, somebody is in the line who should uh, uh, press the mute uh, uh, thing. Brilliant, thank you. So, okay. so the, phys the details of the physical environment is what you're getting with the platform. So if I'm uh, not only from the client side, the operating system, the uh, user interface, the um, platform I want, the server platform that I want to put that application to to running to be running is it Windows is it Linux is it any other um, um, operating system or how do you have, this is provided to you by the platform so you don't need to uh, worry about that unless you want to make specific calls specific um, adaptations to to make use of uh, how the OS feature that will make a big difference for your application, but in general, that is the exception. So you just focus on the application, deploy on the server that you use or your customers are using, and that will be rendered and deployed to the client side for you by the platform. So I like you to think today in terms of what effort do you need to do to create an application that will do all of those things uh, that are currently on the list? So your application needs to connect to a database, let's say Oracle or SQL Server or any other database then. You need to uh, provide the user details of that um, entity, let's say customers, you have a screen with customers and the customer detail is stored in the database. So you need to create uh, SQL statements to query, to insert, to update and delete and that needs to go through from the mobile device to back to the server so it needs to have a support for the services that will communicate you also need support transaction, let's say if uh, you're providing order and details and the customer needs to make sure that the full order is saved, if not, you need to roll back and deal with it. Um, also, it needs to be in a multi-tier and scalable. Multi-tier, uh, here meaning you have to handle the client side details for each specific OS but also the server side to multiple databases or multiple OSs. And when you distribute that application, it needs to be also scalable. If you have uh, one user, 1,000 users, or a million users, how do you deal with that? How do you 
adapt your application to support a different, radically different number of users. Uh, on the client side mode specifically, you need to create the form uh, with the designer. Probably that is something that you're doing that uh, very uh, quick today as well. You need to connect to a server. You need to receive application updates on the server side. You need eventually to consume web services. Let's say your application uh, is creating some sort of financial data or calculation and that needs to go to an external entity to get the current rates, for example, of a currency. Or you want to uh, send SMS messages. This, uh, there's a lot of services that provide these as a web service. You might want to cache data on the client side in, to, to improve performance. Um, also, make it portable to multiple platforms and handle all the touches or device rotation and multiple screens density. So, uh, can you just stop for a few seconds and think, okay, how long would it take me to implement this? If the user says, oh, here, here's a um, customer order or here's a um, customer update, I wanted to provide a screen that we can update our customers or enter orders and this needs to be uh, on all those platforms and this is the list of uh, features you must support. Yeah, we, uh, it takes uh, some time like if, if we do all the grounds of development uh, are covering all these aspects like connectivity with the database, writing all the say business logic queries and uh, are connecting to the server. So all that if say we do from scratch, yeah, definitely it takes time. Okay. So, and also, yeah, how one other, thank you. Uh, sorry, I don't, I don't know who, who was speaking, but thank you for, for the feedback. And also think in terms of um, expertise, how many people do you need if you put them together in a team to deliver this, how many type of expertise they need to have client side, server side to to do all that. So that's, um, this is the, the critical point. Because this, if you think of this, these are the key differentiators of our platform. What I'm going to show you is how you can do this very quickly, all of that, and also using one skill set. Just to, all you need to do is to know our platform and you can do this extremely fast. Okay, so I'll show you in practice how to create that in from scratch. I'm going, I'm going to switch uh, applications, can you just confirm you can see my screen? Yes. Yeah. I can see everything. Me too. Yes, okay. Excellent. So I'm going to start uh, giving you a very quick overview and then we go back and um, do more details in layers. So imagine that you're going to start with uh, an agile approach to this, the simplest thing that works first, and then you do another interaction or iteration, and then you add look and feel, and then you do another one. But on each interaction, you can expose this to the user. They can start testing in a more agile environment. So I do something quickly, they look and say, oh, this is good, this is not good. What about this? What about that? You do another interaction very quickly and gradually you implement your application until they say, yes, enough, I'm happy, we can go ahead now. So this is what you're looking at is the studio, the ID for the client side uh, that we call the Magic XPA that allows me to create uh, any application um, that I can deploy the models I've been talking to you about. What I do have here, 
on the left hand side is a list of repositories um, models allows me to create uh, common common widgets for example I'm going to give you an example of that but if you have uh, particular controls or forms that must look or should look in a standard way use st st specific fonts or colors you can create a model and that model every time you put that in a program on a form you just point to that and it inherits all those um, settings. You, I have also a data repository and data here means any type of data. It could be, for example, typically a database, you would think at first probably, but also it could be an XML or you know, it could be um, in-memory data, any data source. So if we extend that concept not from database only but to uh, any data source. I can point to a source, typically, for example, an XML, and that uh, now I can interact with that XML the same way I would interact with a database table. So note this. This is unique. This is fantastic. I can point to a database table and do insert, update, query, etc. But I can do the same, the exact same thing with an XML. There's no difference. I simply define that on the my data repository and now my programs can interact with that in XML without any tags, without anything, like if it were a table. I have a list of programs. This is where I'm going to start soon, where I can create a program. A program typically is doing something either in the background or it would be doing something that interacts with the end user, and in that case, we'll be uh, we'll have a screen. So think of a program either as a function, if you want to relate to whatever language that you use today, or a program could be um, a front end as well. I can have help files and rights to associate to specific accessibility or authorization or authentication. I have menus that I can um, pop up to, to the users. I'll give you an example on that as well. And I also have a repository of components or connectors. So this is <clears throat> where it allows me, for example, to create and point out to another um, platform or another uh, piece of code that could be either magic or external third party and I can reuse that control within my application. So think of, um, let's say you're doing something for the desktop and you have .NET controls or you have .NET functions that you want to reuse, uh, for example. Um, but it could be any, any type of connector or services that you want to bring in and reuse as part of your application. And obviously to go through all of these de in, in the details, I would need more than an hour and a half. So I'm going to stick to data programs and menus because that's probably resonates to something that you already familiar and you might want to see how you do. So my first uh, point here is I, I want to create a screen that allows me to do uh, an interaction with data. As I said, let's say a maintenance of customer details. So I start my program saying this is called customers and I, if I go inside the program by double clicking, I'm presented with a list of um, options, standard options for the, that program. Those options allows me to very quickly define what am I, um, my intentions or my typical cases for all my programs. I'll get back here and give you some more details later on. Now I'm just going to do very quickly uh, a full screen. Uh, and I create here, if I'm interacting with customers, obviously these customers are stored somewhere. If I go into the details here, I'm presented with a list of all data sources that I have currently 
available for me to use on this application. I'll get back to that and see how I can add items to that list. But for now, I'm just going to select customers. And what kind of detail I want to bring from the customers? What kind of details I want to provide to the end users to interact with? Think here as a, a normal SQL, SQL statement. So you point to a table and you select which columns you want to interact with. So in this case, I'm going to pick up everything just to make it very simple. And I did a select uh, of all this, those columns. So now the users will be able to interact with those columns to modify, to create, to delete, to query, to locate, to range. So there's a few list of things. If I don't want them to be able to modify the data, I just change the settings and it's blocked. By default, I'm going to leave that. I'm not going to add any particular logic here. So logic, the logic tab will refer to a specific program or function that you might want to add. For example, you want to validate some data in, you will put here on the logic. If you want a, a specific touch event for a mobile, a click or a desktop to present a list or call some other check you're putting here. And I have a list of forms that, in this case, because my, my program is meant to interact with the end user, I need to present what the end users will see and interact with. So if you think of those three tabs as um, a, a typical uh, other programming language where you have a model view controller, if you're familiar with that, that would be the equivalent. If I so open, here. sure. Should, yes. Uh, which scripts are used to write a logic here, and or which script, uh, scripts are supported? Yes, I can. Uh, my first initial use of any logic here will be a magic uh, format. So what I do is select, for example, a function, give it a name and then create what does that function do. If I open the options, I do a list of things here. So this is the magic platform um, format. And it's not script in the sense that is uh, you coding or you have a text editor to code, but is um, you can think of it as a, a script in terms of using magic uh, specific functionality. If you want to use and call any external um, script or functions or program, you have one of these operations that allows you to do that. So you can invoke your code, invoke C++, C++ for example, or Java, or web services, and so on. Okay. Uh, I, can, I can come back later and, and give you examples of where this is being used for other details. But for now, uh, did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Brilliant. So here, as I said, uh, I, I need to create a form. So if I open the form, you see that the form is currently empty. I could use the controls and paste them manually. Yeah, paste here, paste another one, like you're probably very familiar with any ID that you're currently using. But I can also do is do a small uh, automatic generate generation here. So I said generate a form for me in a format that is displaying one record per, per screen. And now I have here a form created by the automatic generator. If I want to um, make changes here, that's fine. You can make changes. You can change the, the fields manually, and I'll show you later on how to do this automatically. Or if you want to change the, for the fonts, for example, just to give you a quick example, I'm going to pick one that's very large. Or if I want these fields to be uh, automatic fit or manually fit, it's uh, plenty of options here. And I'm done. So now I have 
a program and I have um, a screen. If I want to expose this now to a mobile device, uh, all I need to create is uh, a public name. So that means that this program is now available to be called by the client side on any device. And But how do I deploy this? How do I make this available on a server that users can interact from their mobile devices? All I need to do is create a deployment package uh, because I'm in, on Windows here. It's called the cabinet file. It's an ECF format. And that will make transform the metadata I explained to you in the beginning into something that is executable for that platform. If I copy this to a server, then this will be available for uh, the end users to interact with. So let me do that. I can remember my password. Uh, currently, this is running, so I'm going to stop that service that's currently running. I'm going to paste a new version, which I call version 20 in this case. And I'm going to tell the settings um, to next time any user requests that application to run version 20 now for them. So they are now if I start the service, and I'm going to show you here um, an iPad uh, running the client-side application. So if you look at these two components, you have the server there where the application was deployed to, and now you have here the client-side where imagine you're yourself using the application. And I'm going to access my application, and that will be presenting me that customer screen. So now I can interact with that uh, application like I normally do on, from my iPad here. And I'm going to change this to 10.42, which is my current time. And that's it. So I can now interact with all those fields. The, the user can update, can create, can delete because I left all those um, flags on. And if I, just to prove a point, if I go back, say, left my application, and then I come back later, you see that the data that I typed in went back to the uh, server and it was saved. So you notice that even though I didn't have to code that manually, the interaction with the fields and the creation and update of any data was done for me automatically by simply setting those flags within the application. In that case, I'm just using the default that I have on this current application. Any questions? Okay, if you don't, uh, let's let's start now doing another iteration with this application. Let's see, uh, for example, let's assume that on this country option here, I don't want to type in, I want to present the user with a list of countries to interact with. So let's go back and make a modification on the application. So if I go back to the studio, and I want to show you something else as well. Every time you want to test the application, you don't need to go back to the iPad simulator or the hardware that you're using at the moment. Remember that these applications work not only for mobile, but also for the desktop. So I can actually run this application and test it from here, from my desktop. The data is different because this one is pointing to one machine and the other on the server is a different database version. But um, in terms of test, this is the test data. The other is the live data, uh, for example. But I can test this application on the desktop as well. So this is a normal Windows desktop application and behave as such. And I can now, for example, add the change I wanted to add. Remember, I want to change country instead of a field that is typed to a list of options. 
I can just paste a control here, for example, and I can make them as large or as tall as I want. And if you look at this data, there's a data um, binding here. If I look at the country, this is saying that is the current column I, that is the country coming from customers. So this is the data bind. I just need to bind this control so I can remove this one and just align it and make it bigger. And I just data bind it again to the same column. So I want this to be the country's update. But in, uh, what is the content that I want to put on that uh, list of options? That in this case is a combo box. I can do a quick point to uh, another table. Normally I would have a country's table or some other uh, table. I'm just going to use this one. And I want to display all the countries that I currently have on that database. And I want to link that to the country itself. And I could use any index. I'm going to I don't have appropriate things. Next year, just going to use the cities index. And that's it. So I can quickly test this as a Windows application. So now there's a combo box there. There's a list I can update. Looks good. So now, how do I make this look like an iPad application or an Android uh, setting of control? All I need to do is deploy the newer version. So I can test or let the users test from their devices. And if I copy that the same way, I'll deploy that to my server that's now exposed to the outside world. I'll change my settings file to say next time uh, I use a request this application, this deploy version 21. And I go back to my iPad and run the application again. You see, there it is. But what did I do? You probably, if you're familiar with iOS, you would say that for uh, the iOS control, when I click here, I expect a very specific control to iOS, isn't it? I don't want to see a combo box. I want to see this nice iOS control. And there it is. I didn't have to do anything to make it render as an iOS control. The same way if I run this from the Android, I would see the specific control and so on. As I saw the control when I use the um, um, desktop version. And I can carry on. I can do things like, um, I don't know how we're doing for timing. I can talk for five days on features, but I don't, I need to, um, reduce here. So I could do, I just want to show you, there's a few things I like to show. Let me show you the model concept. So if I want my, if you look and say, oh, this form is a bit plain, it's a bit too white, uh, let's make it look a bit better. My designer could be sitting next to me and say, no, I want the designer to be like this, the form should be like that, and so on. So I, I'm, I've just created here a default form, and I said that it has a specific background, for example, or it could have some specific fonts, etc. I just want to show you that if I now, whenever I create a form, I have a question here. Sure. Yes, please. <coughs> okay, so uh, the data binding that you have done with the database, okay? So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so if say I want to do data binding from two different tables, okay? I don't want to make any changes in the database, okay? But I want to combine both of those uh, data in, in one, say, one combo box. So sure. can it? So uh, is it possible? And second is, uh, uh, can the data binding be done uh, with say database uh, plus a web service data uh, combined? So if say some of the fields are getting data from database and some of the fields are getting data from a web service. Absolutely, you can do. Um, I skip that, but the data here, for example, I'm using customers in this database, Northwind 
but I could be pointing to a SQL light, I could be pointing to an XML. So this is just the data sources that I'm making visible to the application. Within my program, I can combine all of them. On the data view here, I have this source, but I could have another source. I could, for example, link a, another table, I say orders to get the customer's order, or I could do uh, this concept of virtual, just to, which is a local variable. Uh, to answer your question, what if you want, want to display city and country together? Yeah, so this is city plus country. I can just define uh, that this is the combination of city plus country. So now I have a combination. I have two fields, and I can use this now as a combo box, for example. And the data I'm combining here could be from a web service. So I could invoke a web, uh, sorry, okay. I could invoke a web service, as I said, I showed you before, just to point out. Or I could invoke a web service, <coughs> invoke .NET, invoke a user-defined procedure, or by here, user-defined procedure could be a C++ piece of code, for example, uh, or a web service, which was your question. Did that answer your question? Yes. Hello? Yeah, OK. OK. And so as I was saying, this form is um, have a specific look and feel, but now I want to change it to the default one. So I go back here and I say, uh, use instead the default form. And that now has a different look and feel. So I can even on top of that make uh, other changes, specific changes if I want to. For example, I want to make it transparent, and that's it, OK? So this is the, um, before I deploy another version, let me show you one more thing here. You see that on the top of the navigation there, there's nothing, yeah? If you notice, or it says customer, I can only uh, exit the application. Mm -hmm. I, if I go back here and make uh, two changes, one, I want to present um, another screen, another navigation there. So I have this concept of menus, which I can create and point to other programs, for example. And if within that program that I'm currently developing, if I go back and say, uh, present uh, different options as a menu, for the user. So I simply point to that list. Now if I do one last deployment, creating a cabinet, and version 21, this will be version 22. Go copy this to my server. say to the settings file, next time deploy version 22. And if I restart and go back to my iPad, you see that now the look and feel of the form is different as I made that change. And there's a menu option here now that I can call other programs. So these are programs that I had before, the same way you can call your existing programs. Uh, you could have a um, list of orders, in this case showing all the uh, parent and detail. If I have more time, I'd like to show you how quickly it is to create this parent-child. is very, very quick to create. So, and a very typical problem, you have a table that is the header and another table or another data source with the details, could be XML as I said, and to put them together is very, very quick. Or you notice that 
when I go to that program related orders, the navigation also is provided by me. Actually, let me just show you something. Um, I can have I can have um, an integration of a third-party control in this example here. There's um, some charts, some graphs, and the navigation on the top there is the is back button is provided by me, so uh, by the platform for me. So there's a lot of more that is provided out of the box for you to create the application, and all these can be customized as you see fit. Hi, Joe. Uh, this is yeah. Lalit here. Hi. Uh, I have a question here. So sure. Sometimes we need to uh, um, insert the data from a website or direct URL, HTTP URL. Uh -huh. So, uh, can we do that in our screen or in our form directly? Yes, it's the, the same um, way that I just showed you the minute ago by uh, for web service. So, it's just another call to that web service that you want to or the HTTP call that will return some sort of data in a format. It could be text, could be JSON, could be XML. That is filled into this virtuals and then you can use and interact it as you normally do. Okay. Yeah. Is that the case? Yes. Yeah. Please. Yeah. So you notice also that you normally don't need to go to all the um, details of all the technologies if you don't want to. So if uh, you have a, a, a supplier that says, oh, I have this web service or I have this HTTP, if you call this, pass those credentials, it will return JSON file for you. You said, okay, no problem. You just call it from here with the magic operations. You can do all that. And then from here, you interact like it was a SQL table. Okay, um, uh, I'm running out of time now, but um, uh, I didn't show you examples of how to uh, do the, I can actually show you very quickly. If you look at the properties, I just want to show this. The data tab allows me to define the type of uh, transactions I want to have. And one very uh, nice feature, particularly if you're doing desktop applications, uh, is the parallel execution. So if you create, uh, want to create a multi-threaded application, this is just setting parameters, which is a very powerful, interesting feature, and follow the same rule, very quick to do, very quick to deploy, as I hope you saw by this small example I've done for you. Okay, so if I carry on, uh, in terms of the mobile client, normally you have all these types out there. We fit um, on all, all those uh, examples, what I've showed you today is mainly a native app, but I also show you an example of a hybrid with uh, a chart calling a service that is providing that. And the advantages of having a, the native application, like speed, device-specific APIs, but from your point of view of your effort of development and expertise, you're doing all from within the platform, and the platform is giving that details for you. So what I hope you, you could see is that I created a presentation layer. If I access the same application that I showed you on the iPad from a BlackBerry, that will be working on the BlackBerry. I also show you that running on the desktop, Windows desktop, which was my test environment, and we have a list of devices that are supported there. And the context is changing automatically. It will change automatically. You so, saw uh, from desktop to mobile, but you could have from mobile to mobile as well. And just to summarize, 
what's in it for you? Or you might be asking yourself, what's in it for me? But just to hopefully you remember uh, the details I showed you. And the summary would be, you have one application to create enterprise other application. Sorry. And I didn't uh, go into details of security, but uh, uh, there's quite a lot there. Um, the application development is one studio, one platform, and multiple deployment. So it's a single development effort, and all those cl native clients that allows you to access the application from multiple channels and reduce immensely your effort, reduce immensely your need for expertise, experts on all those platforms or different services or different languages, and um, provide you to very quickly respond to the business by focusing on the application development as opposed to all the underlying details. Um, the last part is to show you how you connect to the backend systems if you want to create, uh, if you're in a situation where you're developing a mobile application, that's a, your main focus, that's what you're doing. But the, your customer might have different applications, the in-house applications or combination of in-house and cloud. How do you uh, make those systems uh, create an API that you can call or create a service that you can use within your application, within your mobile application. Um, the typical scenario, uh, just to give you a quick example here, someone is on the road, you create the application, the focus is to approve, purchase order, and the user will be doing an interaction with a screen on their Blackberry, for example, but the data and the validity, uh, there's a lot more behind the scenes, behind the application look and feel on the mobile. The application needs to interact with your ERP, you need to interact with your CRM, and then bring services or data to the front end that you are creating. So you can use the other part of our technology, which is the Magic XPI, to create the server side interaction workflow validation or service wrapper around those applications. So even though you see the, here I created the, just an application as I showed you that interact on the mobile but uh, the server side if you want to interact with those applications you can also do that using the other part of our uh, platform. For uh, the integration part what you use is a, a studio as well, and those studios allow you to uh, use connectors that we provide out of the box, and you drag and drop them on a, um, on a pallet and interact with those applications. And you might recognize some of those icons there, like uh, Dynamics or the bottom here, uh, SharePoint. So we have a list of connectors that wrap application access, think of it as a, a SOA enabled or enabling tool. If you have uh, either a legacy system, a .NET code or any other application, you use those connectors and wrap them and expose that to your mobile application. And I'm just going to give you a quick demo on that too. Just start the studio here. So this is for now I'm putting my head of an integrator and I want to uh, go back to multiple systems and make them talk to each other because for my mobile application I want a service that the user will interact with but I want to hide from my mobile application that the data is coming from 
uh, SAP and Salesforce, for example, and that would um, be managed by only the server side because that's only its concern. How do I do this? I'll create a, a very uh, quick example here. I created a flow. So a flow, think of it as um, a business flow or business implementation of a solution or even a workflow. Uh, let's say I keep uh, Sync, Salesforce, and SAP. So every time, let's say, I want to uh, an update on the customer detail on my database, on a database, for example, I want to keep that in sync between two other systems. One is Salesforce because it's living in the cloud, and SAP that it could be within my network and I need to make that those two systems uh, work together. So what I do is use one of these uh, connectors. Because I'm talking Salesforce and SAP, I need a Salesforce connector. So here it is. And I grab the connector and drop it right here in the middle. All I need to do now is configure. So let's just say update customers in Salesforce. My next step would be update the same in SAP. So I need the SAP connector. And here I have a few uh, versions of SAP, for example. I'll drop here and say update customers in SAP. Notice that I'm talking of, uh, about very large specific applications that require a talk with an expert and to be able to interact with. But this is facilitated for me by those connectors because those connectors wrap a lot of the functionality, a lot of the services that those applications require to interact with. So if I double click here, the configuration part is to point to an object. Let's say I, I want to access customers. So I just need to locate my customer um, object in Salesforce, uh, sorry, customer is called account, and I fill in the variables here that will interact with Salesforce or get that data from Salesforce. Before going into the details here, I'll do the same for SAP. So what I have here in the configuration is pointing to my SAP. I don't know if you're familiar with SAP, but this will be details of SAP, how I can interact with. And here, even if I don't know a lot of details about SAP or Salesforce, I have these options, these wizards, that are allowing me to talk to the expert. So I say, okay, should I call an IDOC or an IFC? What type of IFC or IDOC should I call? And the expert will tell me, oh, this one, that one. And from uh, that detail, I now can simply put data from one side to another by uh, mapping. Let's just use one here. Um, account details, for example, to uh, any source that's coming from. Let's say if I want to get this from a database, where is the detail coming from? So let's go straight to the mapping. Uh, let me just get... Um, database. So I could get the data from a database, I could get from a file, an XML, etc. For the example here, just to be very quick, I'm going to get random data from variables. And now I can see, okay, this data needs to go from here to here. This will update that field there, and so on. So this is the logic to up, uh, update. And I could even combine. And if I combine fields, I could use uh, like an Excel uh, cell uh, format or formula where I can use functions, I can use variables, and combine that data. So if I just put uh, something here as an example, and this will tells me that there is a transformation because I'm combining two fields and this is the rule that I want to do. 
and that's it. Now, the same way I did with the mobile, I, all I need is to create an executable, which is a cabinet again, and put that on a server. And this will now um, we do the, the definition I, I've just done. On the top line here, I have an, a trigger area. The trigger area defines when this needs to be updated. When do I want to, the customers to update in Salesforce and in SAP? I could do this, for example, every time um, an email arrives with some details. Let's say I'm, I'm going to update this via email. So I drop an email here in the configuration I say, if the email comes from someone or a specific subject or with a specific detail, then trigger that process. Another way to do it could be from a web services, more typically. Uh, I could be having the mobile application, for example, calling and passing the details via web service or HTTP call, as uh, one of you just asked me. Sorry, I, I, I don't know your name. And um, or I can also do a scheduler. A scheduler says that this process needs to execute at a specific interval, so every number of days, every number of hours, every number of minutes, let's say every five minutes, uh, go check any differences so between those systems and keep them in sync. And that's the idea. Later on, likewise, I did with mobile. If I want to make changes to this process, let's say every time I do these updates, I want to email someone and tell them this update happening or with a specific condition. Every time a very large account is updated, then for the user, and I simply configure here again saying send an email to this person or these people on this list and so on. There you are. Then I added another step, redeploy, it will be running again. Uh, this is a very quick, extremely quick overview. Uh, I don't know if you have any questions regarding this area. If you want to ask, them, ask it now before I go back to my slides. And then I'll be stopping for the QA completely. This connector. So, uh, uh, who's speaking? Yeah, this is Rahul. Uh, ah, Rahul. Mm -hmm. These connectors can be also uh, have the uh, custom connector or is it going to only the state of connectors we can use? Sorry, can you, can you say that again? Can you please repeat uh, your question? Uh, the connectors you, uh, you, have, uh, you have shown the list of connectors. So, I mean, uh, these are the only state or we can also have our own custom connectors? Oh, you can, yeah. This comes with an SDK, so you can create your own connectors, yeah? And normally these are uh, very, they could be very specific, like uh, Salesforce and uh, SAP example I used. But you notice there's .NET here, there's Java. So this allows you to wrap any of your code in those languages, and they now become a connector. So you can use that in any flow that you need. And if you want to create your own to a completely new application, for example, it comes with an SDK. You can create that and wrap. That will become a connector that you now can reuse and reuse. Okay. Okay. So I've been told already to uh, shut up, stop talking. So <laughs> I'll stop it here, and uh, I'll let you. You guys have any other question in general? If you want uh, other. Any example that we might need to, to go into more details. Feel free. The session now is yours. Uh, hi, Joe. Uh, this is Lalit again. Hi, Lalit. Uh, uh, this is not related to this section, the earlier section, general section. See, you are telling that uh, you can develop an application, mobile application, which can be targeted for any type of device, irrespective of the platform, 
as well as the resolution. Uh, resolution means, I mean to say that the same application can be targeted for a tab or can be targeted for a mobile phone. Yeah. So, uh, my question is, are we going to do any kind of UI alignment or UI resolution fix, something can we have to do or it will work seamlessly without any kind of UI realignment? Both, because it, let's say if you, uh, in principle, or use my example here, if this tends to fit on any form factor, and this screen is very simple, so it should be able to, you yeah. don't need to do any adaptation. So when I access it from my uh, iPhone, it will be compressed, unless if the font is too small, I might want to do any other detail. But in some screens, you, you might want to. You might say, oh, I want actually to have two views, one for tablets and one for phones. So that's no problem. Yeah. You simply create another form here, and you say, this is customer for tablets, and this is customer for um, phones. Yeah. And now on the properties, when I say this is the display I want to do, I simply put a condition here. When the program is executing, saying, oh, which operating system am I executing? And then it will use the different form. Okay. So you just, but you're just changing the views. All the effort in terms of logic updates or checks are still the same, right? It's just a presentation yeah. of the density. Yeah. So okay. both, both, both things. You yeah. might be Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another thing, does this platform support for J2ME or um, what do you call Java enabled devices? Uh, we have a list of platform, probably Martina or, or Stefan can give you the list. Um, and the, we need to have, normally we have, we need to have a native, if you're using native or hybrid, we need to have a runtime for that. So we need to have uh, an executable, a client. If uh, the device doesn't have a client, then you need to fall on the web uh, deployment. So you, your forms will need to be deployed or will be deployed as a, a, as a browser-based application. Okay, I have a question. So when you said like uh, we have to have a client on uh, mobile, uh, uh, like in first place before we uh, deploy any application. So uh, is it possible to deploy, uh, to have multiple clients? Okay, in first place because if say I want to deploy say three applications. So, sure. uh, uh, so can I have three different clients uh, to serve those three applications, or, or do I need to access all those three applications via single client? So, is it like no. a container-based approach, or uh, can I have multiple containers? It's both. Again, what you have, let, imagine a scenario where you have uh, enterprise to employees. So, you probably have one application which works as a container which gives them access to multiple applications within the container and change according to their current position in the company. So that's one client working as a container for that company. The other scenario, you could have a government, for example, to, to citizens. And in that case of business to consumers, and you have a business that is creating multiple different applications. So this goes to the app stores as a completely separate client. They have their own, even though behind the scenes is, uh, is still a platform, but is white labeled or it was uh, adapted and the clients are multiple clients running as separate applications. Uh, yeah, but we cannot have multiple containers itself, even if, say, uh, for B2E case, okay, say, where uh, I want to provide, say, two different applications or two, or two employees of, of uh, my company, and uh, but I want to also provide them different icons, okay, for the same. So, sure. uh, so is, is it not possible to have two different containers serving maybe oh, two is. different set of applications? You can it is, that. absolutely, absolutely possible. I, I just used two examples to emphasize that it is possible. Sorry, I confused you. It's totally possible. Both scenarios are supported.
Okay. You, because when you say it like uh, that application can be deployed in App Store. So I believe that's not a container of source. It, it will, so Magic Software will generate a native application. Okay. So that's right. uh, but my question was whether can, can I still use a container based approach uh, so that I can dynamically maybe uh, change the application on the fly without uh, 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 letting, uh, without changing the container. Whereas uh, I will let employees to use two different containers. If, because if say I take an example, I have a company where uh, it is having say multiple subsidiaries. Okay, uh -huh. I want to have a different container uh, for different uh, subsidiaries. Whereas uh, still it is it will use a containerized approach instead of a native application generation approach. So is it possible there? Yes, yes, no problem. Okay. And just to keep, extend and uh, apply on your example, you would create um, a, the, the container show of the, the client side that I showed you here on my iPad or simulator. This will, you will simply compile that in, uh, with your own icons for each application. They will have their own icon and look and feel. And that will be deployed, let's say, on the App Store as completely separate applications. And by doing that, you still have the option to uh, update that on the fly. So as you uh, update your application on your servers, those are rendered now with the uh, new updates. You don't lose that option just because you create separate uh, clients. Uh, in the background, we have uh, uh, every time running the, the application server who's uh, communicating uh, with the different clients. And so you can also run different uh, versions of uh, your applications uh, and communicated, uh, which are communicating with the different uh, uh, versions of mobile clients. Okay. Sure. Uh, hi, Joe. Uh, another question here. Sure. Uh, does this software support uh, uh, device management features? Like MDM, you mean? Yeah, correct. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The MDM will be a third part. Yes, but but we 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 are not MDM. Uh, so okay. if you have an MDM, yeah, you can integrate that. Okay. Uh. For, uh, for one remark about the MDM, uh, we have a few partnerships around MDM. So we have a uh, very strong partnership with SOTI uh, and also with Mobile Iron. So um, uh, here we can also, if, if you don't uh, use these systems, for example, if you need uh, to have uh, any more information about it, we can provide you as well um, with, um, with these capabilities. So, uh, sorry, Joe. Please go ahead. Uh, no, I finished my. This is my last slide. Just summarizing everything I spoke. And the next one is just thank you. So we're in the on the QA. Uh, yeah. Please feel free to ask and carry on on the questions. We still have five minutes, I guess. Yeah. So, do you have um, any more questions? Uh. Not, uh, yeah, so not it's a technically, so uh, I have questions around say, uh, sorry, so I have questions around say licensing models, so like do you provide uh, magic software as a hosted service or do you provide say perpetual license, so what is your licensing model? Um, it's, it's quite simple, we have, uh, we have both, uh, but uh, we have a special agreement with Telefonica, uh, because they, what, uh, what they are offering is some totally hosted model, model because it's their business model. And uh, for them, we have a specific agreement with all the prices, etc. So if you like to know the prices, uh, how Telefonica is acting, I recommend uh, that you talk to Hassan, to Hassan Shiden, um, because he's the owner of uh, this, uh, this uh, um, uh, business. And uh, uh, he, can, he can provide you with all the information. Uh, I apologize not to give you now this uh, specific prices. We, we agreed already with... Uh, uh, with Telefonica because it's an agreement between Magic Software and Telefonica. So no, I, I suggest, but uh, uh, 
all in all, we have two different. We have a few models. We have um, um, uh, we have a model for MCAT, which means for consumer applications. We have a model for for MIP, uh, for the enterprise applications. Um, we have um, uh, we have subscription models. We have uh, on-premise perpetual models. So it's uh, I, I personally believe that we can we can provide all models which are more or less familiar in the market and uh, standard in the market. Okay. And one more question I have, like uh, if I come back to the technology side, uh, you mentioned like uh, that business rules uh, can be maintained or can be managed independent of uh, this development environment. So do you have any interface that can be provided to maybe a business users group or business managers or, or, or say uh, authorizing uh, authority where uh, they can, they can uh, create a business rule with a user friendly uh, interfaces. So how that business rule uh, uh, like uh, uh, management is done uh, in this software, is it like through this development interface itself or do you have a separate interface for that? No, that's all within those Studio. So you will need, um, if it's on the client side, you as a developer will interact with the user unless it's something that you are creating. You create for them a screen or they set the business rules that's just another application and you can do that too. Uh, hi Joe, uh, another question. Does this platform support uh, development of applications in Windows 8 uh, mobile OS? Uh, we it's don't under construction. Uh, it's not yeah. planned yet but we will support it uh, later. Yeah, yeah it's it very, very short. You, uh, you can run it in Windows. Uh, you can run that. The only problem is at the moment uh, that the market share of uh, Windows Mobile 8 is so less at the moment, and uh, the signs we see in Europe at the moment. I can only talk about Europe. It's maybe in India or in other uh, uh, continents. It's a little bit different. But in Europe, the market share is too less uh, at the moment to to say that this is significant for us. So we had till today we had very very less uh, requests about Windows Mobile 8, and uh, personally I must say uh, I'm I'm not convinced that this uh, will be play a role in uh, in that market at all in the next couple of years. But this is my personal opinion. Um, uh, but if it if it, uh, if it a significant role, we will roll out it immediately. But for the moment okay. we have no need. That's that's more or less the problem. Okay. Uh, How is the from my interest? Is, is that significant for you? Do you see a market here? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, from our perspective, uh, uh, most of the uh, customers they are saying that yes, our application should support Windows uh, 8 yeah. mobile or something. So that's why I'm thinking whether we can make uh, applications. Uh, by using this software for this platform. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, what we are supporting, we are supporting Windows Mobile. Yes, um, uh, but also from Telefonica, we, we we don't have this request to support it at the moment. And um, so, but if if it's really needed, if we have the market, if we have business, we will do it. It's not uh, it's not that we don't have it. Uh, as Martina said, it's under construction. It's already in. In uh, in plan, it's uh, it's not not already in plan. It's uh, more or less uh, in development. But the big question is, do we roll out it? Yes or no? For now, we okay. must say the rollout uh, makes no sense for the moment. If you tell me that uh, it's needed and you you have uh, a lot of business out of it, uh, we can think about and we can talk about to roll out it. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, another technical question: uh, Does this software support, or does this platform support? Post notification kind of things. Yes, we can uh, do something like that. But uh, in this case, you we must check uh, also for each uh, mobile device client, and we can also modify it and bring some uh, specific uh, iOS code in 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 the client uh, before we generate this version for the client. So in this case, we have also if nothing if. Uh, 
uh, we have not native uh, everything inside. We can all we have also influence uh, uh, the client. Do you understand what I mean? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get it completely. Mm -hmm. We we. Uh, if we have uh, specific uh, features for, for the mobile devices not uh, native uh, on board, uh, we have also uh, the possibility to, to, uh, to influence uh, the iOS uh, code for the mobile client, for instance. So we can bring some coding inside, and then when we create the version, uh, for, like you see here, for the iPad, then we can also influence something in this area in the code, and so in this way we are able to uh, support push notifications. Okay, yeah. So for this embedding this uh, code, okay, uh, so like uh, can we embed the uh, can can we embed the hybrid code as well, like HTML5 code as well, or it is only the native code that we can embed? No, that the example I showed you with the graphs was uh, an XML um, HTML sorry example. You can embed any any code. Okay, so native as well as hybrid, both we can embed. That's yes. what you said. Okay. Yeah, that's what I meant by the hybrid model. Yeah. Okay. So, but but do you use like a phone gap or something inside, like uh, to or to manage that hybrid code, or uh, so like what kind of APIs uh, that are available for that hybrid? Code Around. Code? Yeah, it's our. There's one control called the browser control. It wraps um, a browser within it. And then that will run as a, a browser form. So from the your application XPA code, that the events, everything is interactive with those events within that browser control. Okay. Uh, there is a this is Rahul. Uh, last time it has been said that uh, there is a monitoring solution. So, is it also is it an optional product or is it coming? Um, I mean, as a package of whether you buy XPA or XPI. No, it's part of it. I didn't show you. Uh, I have got a few things, but it's part of it. I can even show you from my server here what's running at the moment. But yeah, sorry, Martina, go ahead. Yeah, I think I was not sure if I understand the question directly. But you uh, correctly, you are asking for the monitoring tool. Uh, which uh, Joe mentioned. This is a uh, part uh, from the XPI integration part platform. Part stack, yeah. Okay, okay. It's part of the technology stack, yeah. Yeah, yeah I also didn't have time to mention the cloud-based, and which has specific monitoring there as well. But this probably needs to be rearranged for another time. What Joe has mentioned, uh, we can show you for hours um, the, the, the platforms. And, uh, but this is what I offered you in the beginning. If you have specific questions, if you like to see specific things, and uh, if you need to do a more, a more deeper exercise, and uh, to give you maybe a kind of training via, uh, via WebEx or on-site uh, in Unix. So we are, we are open to do all these things and uh, to set up a second round or a third round. So it's, uh, we are quite open uh, for continuing. And uh, it's still up to you to tell us uh, what you like to do and what you like to have and to see. And uh, please let us know, and uh, we will set up uh, a next round. So it's uh, it's, uh, it's quite normal for us uh, that we get uh, we, that, that we offer you this uh, this kind of service. Okay. Do we have any more questions out of it? I think we are good in time. We are. A little bit delayed now by five minutes, but I think it's. Uh, I hope it's okay for you that we uh, that we use this uh, few minutes. If you do not have any questions, so I I like to thank you all for your time to participate. It would be great to get a feedback from your side. So if you have a feedback, it would be great to get it. Yep. What do you think about uh, what you saw today? Uh, yes, yeah, so. Uh, uh, so I uh, yeah, definitely will provide the feedback and uh, thanks for your time also uh, like to uh, to do a quick walkthrough of this product but we would definitely would like to have some more detail in form of documents uh, uh, like uh, about the features uh, about say 
uh, say embedded uh, uh, say, uh, embedded uh, say code snippet feature or web services or adapters uh, what you support the devices that you support so if you get uh, if we get uh, more material then it will be much uh, better for us to analyze them uh, offline and then uh, uh, and then look at uh, uh, yeah so how uh, how are different this particular product uh, uh, yeah. is and what are the key features so if you can highlight uh, uh, if or if say you can provide some uh, say comparative analysis as well okay uh, as compared to say any other competing product so these are the key differentiating features that magic software is having then it will be much easier for us to grasp quickly and then vouch for magic software in front of say customers or in front of say other colleagues yeah this is what yeah. uh, we, we saw yeah, I I can't yes um, I kindly like to ask you to send us an email with all the requests you have what you need uh, what you like to have it would be good to get it in writing um, uh, in an email and uh, I will forward it to my colleagues which can care about it because I'm personally will go on vacation next week um, it's vacation now time now in Germany and uh, uh, so I will forward it to my my colleagues which can care about it and we provide with all the information you need. Is that uh, good for you? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So, okay. Lalit uh, okay. and uh, Rajat, you uh, can also post uh, your queries and then we can consolidate and send it uh, out to you. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Please, please send it, uh, send it to, to me. Okay. okay. Yeah. Very good. Please, please send it uh, to me. Martin. Sure. So, uh, please send it to me, Martina, Stefan Romeda and Martina Hermann, and uh, we will care about it. Um, it would be great if uh, if we can get it uh, uh, till beginning of next week, uh, because then I can I can uh, work personally on it. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, I will go uh, in vacation. And uh, but Martina is there, and uh, she can also work on it with my colleagues. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank so, you. Thank you all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you also. Uh, thank you very much for thank the you team all. for your time. And I hope we could give you a very good uh, overview and impression of our technology. Yep, sure. Yeah. Thank, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Martina. Thanks. Okay, bye. great. Have a good time. Have a, yeah, have a good day. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you bye, very bye. much, Joe, for your time and your support. Thanks. Sure. You're welcome. Anytime. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.